Well, this Wednesday, we're visiting one of the stranger locations in railroad history. It's not part of the Narrow Gauge Convention. We passed by here on our way to the Narrow Gauge Convention. It's north of Denver between Cheyenne and Laramie in Wyoming. It's a pyramid and a monument to Oaks and Oliver Ames, the Ames brothers who financed the Union Pacific Railroad. Their faces are set into the sides of the pyramid facing east and west. The monument has been referred to as a 60-foot pile of steaming hubris. It does seem to be somewhat narcissistic to build a pyramid to yourself, after all. As the story goes, Oliver Ames became president of the Union Pacific at Abraham Lincoln's insistence. He wanted his oversight on the construction of the railroad. His brother Oliver was a congressman and could help secure the funding. Unfortunately, Oliver was censured by Congress after $50 million worth of construction funds disappeared. There are some strange internal spaces inside the pyramid which used to be accessible, which were said to be burial chambers for the two brothers, but they were never actually used. The monument was constructed by the Union Pacific Railroad in the 1880s after the brothers had died at a cost of over $65,000. That'd be roughly one and a half million dollars today. The pyramid is constructed out of rose quartz, a native stone found here at the location, a rather pink granite. It actually makes for some rather stunning stonework here on the pyramid. But it is the native stone that you find around the area here. You can also see many of the tooling marks. They made no attempt to clean up the rough hewn surface of the stone. The widely held notion is that the Union Pacific put up this monument in an attempt to resurrect the reputation of the Ames brothers, well, and their own reputation for that matter. The monument was built at the top of Sherman Hill, which is the highest point on the Union Pacific Railroad. There was a small town here, the town of Sherman, where the helper engines were cut out, and so the monument was prominently located right on the outskirts of the little village. There never was much to Sherman. There was 200 to 300 people living here at any given time. It was a locomotive facility primarily uh, where the helper engines could be cut out and turned around and sent back down the hill. It was also a water stop. They had this really bizarre windmill to pump water up to the water tank. Of course, wind in Wyoming is a, a rather cheap commodity, so it makes sense that they pull the water up out of the ground with a windmill. Although, this is a rather bizarre windmill. There was also a really great trestle here, the Dale Creek Trestle, to get over, you guessed it, Dale Creek. But it was a beautiful wood trestle. Unfortunately, like a lot of wood trestles, it wasn't around very long. It soon burned down, and they had to replace it with a steel structure. The steel structure known as the Dale Creek Viaduct. However, none of this was really around all that long. The Union Pacific twice moved the tracks to reduce the gradient and simply abandoned the town of Sherman uh, and the viaduct. A significant problem here on this line were attacks by vicious jackalopes. When a locomotive would inadvertently kill a jackalope, they would proudly display the animal's horns on the headlight of the locomotive. Uh, but I digress. At any rate, the monument became a popular tourist attraction. While switching out the locomotives, people would be allowed off the train and they could get their picture taken with the monument. The monument's not nearly as popular these days, but occasionally someone does wander out there to shoot up some video. 
After the town was abandoned and the tracks moved, the monument was really nothing more than a curiosity along the Lincoln Highway. And now it's not even on the highway, it's back a few miles away from Interstate 80. But it really is a magnificent monument if you stop and look at it. The town of Sherman is long gone and the monument is all alone out here. But if you're into chasing down old ghost towns or old railroad grades, it is not at all hard to find the railroad grades here. Here we can see the main line where it came through, and this is the Y where the locomotives would have been cut out, turned, and sent back down the hill. There are also many foundations and footings to be found here. And while the Ames brothers were disgraced at the end of their lives, one must keep in mind also the hard work that they did for America. Would there have even been a Union Pacific had it not been for the Ames brothers? Aye, aye, aye. Oh, and this little fellow wanted to follow us home, so we adopted him. Wow, wow, wow.